Thank you so much for joining us for another in our series of Story to Tell. Today we have with us Mrs. Angela Brown Mundell. And we'll be having a very important and interesting discussion today because for those of you who don't know, this is my mother. This is my very own mother. So, you know, the discussion is going to be very direct, direct, sorry, and interactive. So we're just going to get straight into it right now. Hi, mom. Tell us. And the viewers, where were you born, what year, and um, your mom's name and dad's name? I was born at University Hospital. Mm -hmm. I am from Irish Town, St. Andrew. Mm -hmm. My mother's name is Pauline Blake. My father's name is Galbert Brown. Okay, so you're born in university hospital mm -hmm. and then you you went and stayed with your mom in irish town for a while yes okay do you um remember the name of the the, the school that you went to um the first school colgate um basic school okay so so you eventually moved from irish town and went to saint Anne to live with your dad yeah okay because my father worked around in parishes, mm -hmm. but he was, he was also a busy man in parishes. Yes. With ladies. Yeah, he loved a lot of ladies. Yes, so my oh. mother and him would have fuss sometimes, so he said he'll take me to my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So I went to St. Anna. What was the name of your grandmother? Ella Harvey. Ella Harvey. And are you the, the, the first one for your mother and father, first child? Yes, I am. So you are the first one for both of them. Yeah. Can you tell us the, the siblings that you have on your, your mother's side and then list the ones on your father's side? I have Oliver, mm -hmm. Ian, Otis, mm -hmm. Leon, mm -hmm. Wendy, Jackie, Betan, mm -hmm. Melody, mm -hmm. and myself. So that's nine. Yes. So it's nine on mommy's side and how much on On my dad? father's side, six of us. Robert, Devon and Shane, mm -hmm. Carleen, Jennifer and myself. And yourself. Okay, so when you moved to St. Anne, you were living with those siblings that is on your father's side. How, how was that adjustment moving to a different parish as a young seven, six-year-old there about? Actually, I was living with my cousins first mm -hmm. over my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. So I would have Sharon, Marva, Lincoln, Delroy, Eugenie, mm -hmm. Veen and Doreen, my cousins, and I would have my aunt and thing. Mm -hmm. You'd have to carry water from the spring, yes. and I couldn't carry the water. Too heavy to bear. Yeah, but I would try. Mm -hmm. You have to get up and go and look wood and all of that, make up the wood fire. Mm -hmm. But my grandmother was good. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to cook the, the, um, the hog feeding. Mm -hmm. And in the night, now we would take out a potato and roast it. Mm -hmm. And she would say, what smell like that? Yes. And we said, um, the food boil over in the fire, Grandma. Mm-hmm. And in the morning, she wouldn't know that we took out one because she counted. She counted and see that yes. one is missing. Yeah. So you guys used to have fun back in those days. What you guys used to do for fun? We would get wire and beat out the buckle stop and make tambourine. Mm -hmm. Cut the bottom of the tin, the condensed pan, mm -hmm. and put the wire through it and make a mic. Most of what we used to do is churches. Mm -hmm. You said play a lot of church. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we played Dolly House under the cellar mm -hmm. or in the pit toilet because it had to be clean every morning. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could eat in there. Very clean. Clean. Mm -hmm. You have to use the red oak to polish the place. Mm -hmm. so, so you're now growing up um, um, in St. Anne with your siblings. How, how was that? Your father had a... Um, uh, a partner staying at the house that you know and not like a stepmother at the house there was help. a stepmother for a little while mm -hmm. but then she went away because my father was still a busy man yeah all over the place yes and because i am the eldest one mm -hmm. i went under a lot of pressure so you end up have to probably shelter a lot of the responsibility yes and um look after my brother my brothers mm -hmm. 
my other sister was in the country with her mother. Mm-hmm. And um, I had to do a lot of things. Many days I didn't go to school. Mm-hmm. Why is that? My father just have me there to do in housework and look after my brother them. And I have to walk about six miles to go to school. Mm-hmm. But I had this friend. She would always wait for me. Paulette Brown. Paulette Brown. Yes. She's in Florida now. Oh, she's still alive. Yes. She would wait for me. And sometimes we are late for school. We would spit on the arm and a leaf. And if the leaf turn over, you know you'll get beaten when you go to church. Um, oh. school. Oh. But if it turn on the other side, you know you're not getting beaten. Okay. And then we were sort of afraid, mm-hmm. my cousins and I, because they said they had black heart man. Mm-hmm. Taking away the children. Taking and... away children and many, and men in coffin. Mm-hmm. So Miss would always say we must walk in a group mm-hmm. from school. Mm-hmm. So, so looking back over your life, are you um, disappointed that you probably never get to engage fully in, in schooling because of yes. your responsibility. Yes. Because you'd have probably gone much further and have yes. more opportunities yes. now. Because I wanted to be a nurse. Oh, that's what you wanted to be a yes. nurse. Or uh, open my business for daycare and elderly. Mm-hmm. I have that in my mind till now. Till now. Mm-hmm. And then, when I, well, when I was at my father's house in Dunsville now, St. Anne. St. Anne. I don't know if my father didn't see it fit for me to learn something or so. Like a skill or something. Or so, but then people would say, Mr. Brown, you know, make sure you go learn something. Mm-hmm. You go make sure you sit down and you only care for the boys. Mm-hmm. And then he sent me, he took me to Westmoreland Housecraft Training Center. Mm-hmm. And I stayed here for a while. And JSE. I got home management and cookery in JC. Mm-hmm. That was the local exam. Yes, and then mm-hmm. I could work at Turkle Towers. When I came back now, I work at Turkle Towers, mm-hmm. Columbus Heights. So that was your first job at Turkle Towers? Yes. And uh, I work at um, Pineapple Place in Bon Shops. Mm-hmm. I used to work at a restaurant in St. Anne. Mm-hmm. So you're basically in the in the hostel and, and tourism yes. industry. Yes. Okay. So um when you got your first job, you're still living with your father and everything. Still living with my father. Mm-hmm. So you had to get um help pay the bills now and everything. Not really, but I remember one day he said he would buy a piece of land mm-hmm. at Holgate. And I gave him the first week's pay to buy the land. Mm-hmm. And I remember I went into housing trust when I came back to town now. Mm-hmm. And um, with my son, Lestine. It's me? You can't say me. My son, Lestine, I you came back to town. You can't say you. You can't say you. And um, <laughs> he holds, I went into housing trust to get a house. Mm-hmm. I always want a house to do a business. Mm-hmm. And when I asked, when, I, when they gave me a paper to give him at the housing trust, and I brought it to him, he said, I kill you, I go kill me off. Mm-hmm. And if me give the land, when me give my boy them. Mm. So at, at all time, he had me at a level for work, so not to it, elevate. Yeah, so is it that you think um, back in those days, persons had a mentality that um, females must have stay home and do housework yes, and then yes. the men now can go out and, and yes, do other things? Yes, because in my mind... When I get get the picture of it, I said maybe he born in the 1409 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Because he's all about boys. Mm-hmm. Getting the priority and right. Things. You know, he's not mixing it. Mm-hmm. And at all time I was there for him. Mm-hmm. Even on his sick bed, I was there for mm-hmm. him. So you never... Even though the treatment of him to you probably wasn't the best, you never met that determine the relationship that you have because he's still your father. And right, and you couldn't say anything. Mm-hmm. In those days, you can't argue like no. Mm-mm. Anything your parents said, said, that's it. Okay, daddy. Can't do 
You could not have a friend to come and look for you at the gate. Because mm -hmm. I remember this, um, a friend came and asked him for me. Mm -hmm. And he said, no. No. Go get work and do and leave my daughter. <laughs> that time, I never know that the guy don't ask me, you know, he mm -hmm. talk to my father, but he's just like that. Just work. Mm -hmm. work work mm -hmm. so it's just it's just probably the mentality of, of parenting mm -hmm. back then he never know better i'm just no. think the ladies stay home do the work and but then, i was not his lady i know but females in general i forgive him yeah because i, I don't i don't think he knew no i don't better. think he knew better yeah um so that's for grandfather yeah brown so tell us now so you're, but he would always ask for you now Mm -hmm. He said, you are very... I didn't know so the boy is smart. Mm -hmm. the... Tell him to call me because I want to see him. Yeah. Before we get into that now. Yeah. How you say, um, you don't want anybody to come check you. You, you, you basically have to stay inside. Mm -hmm. So how I get to be, um, to come into the picture now? How you met my father if he was so overprotective and not letting you out and everything? When I go to Otrius... Mm -hmm, to work. Yes. Mm -hmm. And after that, I met your father. And we had a business together, a restaurant. So how you met him? Tell us how you met him and if you can He used to drive. Mm -hmm. I think he used to drive people. So that's how I met him. Carrying back and forth. Yes. The area. In the area. Okay, he also lives in, in he the He also area. lives in the area. Mm -hmm. And it, um, by the way, guys, um, my father is now deceased. So we are talking about somebody who cannot necessarily reboot anything we're saying but we're going to give an a fair account of everything that as far as we can yeah. remember so um he used to carry persons to and from the yes. area so you get to meet him probably yes. he carry a few time and things. yes so he started to show interest in you now and did yeah. he go tell you first i go to your father as the other other person my father hear about it and asks me mm-hmm let him say my ears say you, um, Mr. Rose, I talk. Mm hmm. Are you? Mm hmm. I say, well, him talk to me sometime. Mm hmm. All right. I will get the, I will get another route I ate. Mm hmm. Go and get to the bottom of it. Yeah. So you go on and go on and continue. And I guess it just materialized that, um, the relationship gets stronger. And then I came on the scene. Yes. At what age you, you had me? 30 something. No, you sure? Yeah. No. 20, um, no. Sorry. 27? 27. I figured as much. Yeah. Only be 30 something. Sorry. So That is when I get saved. Yes. So you had me at age of 27 and you're in your, your father's house still or you move out after move a while? Move out. I had to move out before. When you get pregnant, you had to move out? I move out before because him say... If you're a woman, you have to go your, your, your own yard. Yes. And a picnic him raised. Oh, so the mere fact that you get pregnant now, mm -hmm. um, you had to move out yeah. of, the, of your house. Okay. So tell us now, how is it now adjusting to live outside of your, your, your parents' house? Now? Living on your own now as an adult. How is that experience? Um, he had a daughter, you know. That's my father had a daughter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Her her mother died in child's birth. Mm -hmm. So I had to look after that little girl. She was great. What's her name? Desta Rose. Mm -hmm. She's a good girl. Mm -hmm. She keep up with me. Mm -hmm. And um, my father told my brothers not to talk to me. Why? Yes. That's the mentality he has. But yeah. I forgive him. Yeah, because you, you, you get man now and move out yes. and... Probably ungrateful and everything. But and I even... was working too hard, so I have to get away from the work down there. Yeah, you couldn't... No. Yeah, so you wanted a new environment as right. well. Right, mm -hmm. right. So that is it. And then we had the restaurant. We had a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Tell us about um, starting that business and everything. One of the time I went to Canada, when I came back, that's when I met him. Mm -hmm. Why you went to Canada? I went on a work program. Mm -hmm. For a short while. Maybe a year and odd. Mm -hmm. But those people went back to Filipino. Mm -hmm. So 
manpower you have to come back to Jamaica mm -hmm. for somebody to apply for you. Mm -hmm. When I came back, the other lady said, it's going to be too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then I meet him. And we put together the money that we had done. From he you had, working overseas. Yes. Yeah, that's some savings. And he had a piece of land and we, we made a house and we had the business. Mm -hmm. But he also loved a lot of ladies too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he have other outside children. After, after me? Or before me that you between did? Between and all between. of that. Yes. Timeline is a little yes. mixed up, yeah. And then... I always have this on my mind that I want to accept the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I told him that um, it's not going to work out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go over. I asked daddy if I could come back and he said no. Not taking it back. No. Um, and Auntie Gezi said I could come over our house in Myland. That's his sister, your his, dad's sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she'd call him and say, Galbert. Galbert, that's not good what you're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. You have one of the best humble daughter. Mm -hmm. She would never pass a child or anybody mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, he came over there and gradually we get back together as a father. Yeah, and, and daughter relationship yes. build, yes. build up again. Yes. Because and your aunt helped to bridge the gap. Yeah, my mm -hmm. aunt. Mm -hmm. And she she used to go to, she goes to Highsfield Pentecost Church. Okay. So we would go to church sometime and all of that. Mm -hmm. Sister Jones Church. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I came back to town. Mm -hmm. Back and in with, Yeah, with mm -hmm. Auntie Lassie. Mm -hmm. At 40, 42 Wordsworth right Avenue, okay. Dwayne Park. I said that's your father's other sister. Yes, mm -hmm. my uncle house, mm -hmm. Oscar Brown. Yes. Right. And from there, I went on my own further down the road mm -hmm. at Miss Query House. Mm -hmm. So hold on now. So when you decided to leave uh, my father now, that you have the business together, how that business thing work out? And you said you helped to, to put together to build a house. You leave all of that behind. Uh, how you deal with that? He was devastated and visit me many times but I said no I'm not coming back you're not faithful visit you where over auntie, auntie get, yeah or he would just find out where I am and I see my peer and come and check you yeah but you say you're moving on with yes that, so. yes moving on and he said yeah take me picnic with me I say I'm my picnic mm -hmm. and he would even come to town and look for his son Lestine he can't say me don't refer to me in the third person that say he'd come to town and look for you. Yeah, he would come to, sorry. He would come to town and look for you. Mm -hmm. And he said, my one boy, mm -hmm. and say he would pay a police to come and take you. <laughs> take you away. Yeah, off and the books. Uh, uh, that's not um, a service that the police offer. So it'd be and, off the record, yes. And I went to the police station and told them, and them say, no, he can't do that. Mm -hmm. So then, when you reach the age now, you went to Eric Basic School. Mm -hmm. You were a brilliant boy up to now. Mm -hmm. The Lord bless you. Mm -hmm. And when you went to George Edley Primary, Primary, Miss mm -hmm. Atkinson, Miss Atkinson mm -hmm. said, "Why this little boy is here? Mm -hmm. He need to go back to the basic school." And Miss Shangrilla said, we don't have any space for this child. He's too brilliant. Mm -hmm. And Miss Atkinson said, Brought some, bring some pencil to me. And she said, hold the pencil mm -hmm. to my son. To me. To me. And as you hold the pencil, she said, find a class for this boy. And mother, where are you? I said, here. And she said, um, from today, let him sit in the um, private lesson class mm -hmm. because this, uh, this guy has great potential. Mm -hmm. So when school over, that was a breakthrough for me. Yes. Because I would have to let you stay with the watchman till school over. Yes. 
or go down to miss somebody in the community to yeah, stay with. to stay. Until you come from work. Right. Mm -hmm. And you also knew Kadeen and mm -hmm. her sister, Miss Hilton then. Kadeen Hilton. Yeah, their children used to stay at that nursery. The lady was very good. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The children love when I bring food for you. Yes. They don't want the parents' food. Yes. So in the morning, I had to carry two little pot of macaroni and cheese, a porridge, and something else. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to eat from anybody. Mm. You would wake me up before the and say, Mommy, remember to get up now because I don't want the school lunch. It don't taste good. Yes. At the time, I had to wake from 4 o'clock to light coal stove. Yes. And it went on and on. God is good. Mm -hmm. And... So you started to do different jobs now in Kingston. And and what type of jobs you used to do? Seeing that you used to do the hotel and, and tourists, what type of jobs were you able to get and, and, and stuff in Kingston? I started taking care of children. Mm -hmm. And in the evening, I would go to Red Cross, pick you up some evening and go to Red Cross. Mm -hmm. To do, to do um, um, patient care. And yes. That. And I asked the teacher, Miss Samuels, mm -hmm. if you could stay in the class. And she said, oh, sure. Mm -hmm. And she said, you have a book in your bag. And I said, you always have books. Keep him occup keep right. occupied. And you will have your bag and your lunch kit. Mm -hmm. And I went and did the course. Mm -hmm. And I work with many families from church. Tell us some of the, the, the families that you have worked with, you know, help to mold yeah. their children and... And Their they would parents. never leave you out. Yes. You had to be there. I know it's a lot, but don't okay. go in detail. Just list okay. out a few of them who you have um, worked with and just highlight work them. with Mr. and Mrs. Graham. Yes. I've worked with Varden Downer. Mm -hmm. I've worked with Laverne Reed. Mm -hmm. Auntie Karen. Mm -hmm. I've worked with the Wholeness family. Mm -hmm. And that's not Angel Holness, no. No, um, <laughs> Nicole Holness. Yes. And I have worked with um, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Stuart, Antoinette and Mark. Yes. Just to name a few. And you could go on, on and on and on. on, on. on, so, on. so your impact is far reaching on a lot of families. And, yes. And from what I can see, all those persons that you have worked with over the years, you still maintain a good relationship with them long after you have gone. So yes, that sounds like you are doing a pretty good job. Yes, yeah. I try my best. And then I went to um, Heart. Mm -hmm. I did a little interior decoration and a little um, cookery again. Mm -hmm. And finish up another little portion of um, ch um, working with the elderly. Mm -hmm. And I went to Hillview Practical School mm -hmm. and Nursing. Mm -hmm. 24, 2004. Mm -hmm. And I did well there. Um, Auntie Michelle's father. Who is Auntie Michelle? Clive Forbes. Michelle Forbes. Right. Yes. Her, one hour, her father was there mm -hmm. to help instruct us and other people. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Okay, so we're shifting gears a little bit now. Turning the focus on me through your eyes now, perspective. How was I growing up like in primary school and then high school and then come now into an adult? Just give a quick overview on that um, from your perspective. Mm -hmm. You were a very sickly child, you know. Mm -hmm. I had to stay at the altar for you. Mm -hmm. What was I secret? When you smell the river and dump, mm -hmm. it would act up your sinus and the your asthma stomach and all of those and things. All of those. But I was on my knee. Mm -hmm. Church people was on their knee for you. Brother mm -hmm. Kelly, mm -hmm. Pastor Stuart, a lot of church people were always praying for you. So there are a number of days that I had to go to the children's hospital. Day and night, I have to leave in the middle of the night with you around my neck mm -hmm. to carry to children. Mm -hmm. Are you read children, you were okay. Yes. And the doctor said, Mother, you're going to have to live overseas mm -hmm. with this child. And guess who I used to, guess who was your doctor? 
Michelle Forbes. Michelle Forbes. Yes. At um, Children's yes. Hospital. There. And she instructed me that I must always keep you on carrot juice, mm -hmm. pineapple, and all of those fresh, nice things. No milk and all of that. Mm -hmm. I told her you didn't take milk as a child. Yeah. How was I in like high school now and going up into an adult? You passed your exam when you were nine years old. Mm, that's common entrance. Common entrance and you went to Mona mm -hmm. High. I took you two times to know the way and that was it. Mm -hmm. You would, I would take you out five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And the driver would say, bring you over the, to COVID side, Corville side yeah. to get the bus to go down. Yes. Because when you're coming up, you're not going to get any seat. Yeah. So take it before it go to the terminal. Right. So that's when it's coming up back. Right. Mm -hmm. And with leaving school, you would come home and go to Aunt Mavis and stay till you come. Or I meet you at a point. Mm -hmm. You were very, very obedient. Mm -hmm. In case you don't remember what I say, you would have a notebook and you write down the things. Yes. And even when I give you your lunch, oh boy, you would take back a little piece. And I said, why you take this home? You said, you leave some for me. Mm -hmm. And you would, oh, when I am crying, you would always say, God is going to make a way, mommy. Mm -hmm. And you would even use your brief to wipe my face. Mm -hmm. And what you would be in my lap standing up. And sometimes I say, I'm not realizing I'm for quiz me. But that was a child's attitude. So now into um uh, leave high school now. Um, Go to um Excelsior. Apply for U Tech and they say you were too young. You went to Excelsior. Community college. Community college. And after that went and, and start to work no work so so how was how how did you see me you now working as an adult was i supportive or um still leaning on you for everything how you see that you development were, and that growth he was supportive and he would always have remember a, it's me and i said so you were supportive. you were supportive yeah. thank you <laughs> you were supportive and you would have a paper again to write down mommy you want me to buy something at the supermarket when I'm coming home? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it was a trick because he wanted a Mexico snack. Mm, so just use that for Yeah, but you would cover. buy it and when you come, you would show me the bill that I bought a peanut or an apple. Mm -hmm. Or that time you used to love the supple gin in the, in the box. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. But you were a faithful child. If I said stay right there till I come, mm -hmm. you would stay. Okay. So eventually... um matured into a, a young man now <laughs> and Hallelujah. decided to to move out, get married and move out now. Um, we're going to touch a little on that. That that whole time in your life now, me um, seeking a wife and everything, that part wasn't so smooth because at first, you know, having your one son and then um, uh, another female coming Just into the picture. Them. Yeah. Jesus. That you, you had some the it issues there. It was something, there. It yeah. was something else. Yeah. And there were a little roughy edge. Yes. Because um some would probably say that it would appear that you didn't like um my wife Maria at first and, and thing, even though things gradual things gradually changed. Well it's but not initially, like, you know, I I had just said being protective of your Right. So um during that period, and you, you, you never oh, get it was, no, it was rough. It was rough because I didn't even go to the wedding, you know, because mm -hmm. the whole time I was crying. Maybe I didn't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And he also just leave me up. He didn't even say anything. But every time he would say, Mommy, you're all right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't answer. But it wasn't so smooth. Mm -hmm. So looking back over, over that period of your life, you think you probably should have... Um, Maybe I should have pushed if I have somebody to push I could to. have encouraged you some more to say, you could do don't it. make a mistake by not showing up at my wedding uh, yeah. because it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. He could do it, but up to now, he's a quiet person. Yes. 
So I just, so, le- I just left it as is if you said you didn't want to come and never try to force no. you or encourage you. No. I just leave it. But yes. you're saying that you wish if I could encourage you a little more at and said, um, this decision that you're making, you're going to regret it later on in life. Don't, don't go yes, through I with it. Yes, I wish he had encouraged me, but he... Just even now, I wish he encouraged me. Even now, no, no. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Sometimes I don't talk much. No. Not even pay me any mind sometime. Mm-hmm. And I just go to God and tell him. And by you tell God before the week or the month. Mm-hmm. Mommy, what happened? Mm-hmm. Me say, <laughs> God, I work for you. Mm-hmm. So what do you think um, would have caused me to develop into that type of person? You think going through different um, transition and rough periods of my life, I get to be more... Rigid and rough and... Yes. Because, boy, it, it was more tender for me and so, but some days I have to be wondering if I have anybody. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't say I know the Lord, but I'm learning to lean on him. Mm-hmm. And Violet Reed, mm-hmm. my God, that woman is a tower strength. Mm-hmm. Faith Graham. hmm Sister Reynolds, her mother that died, they were a tower strength. Aunt Jenny. Aunt Jenny. And they it would, goes on and on. They would encourage you. They would time encourage time. me. And uh, all of that. Mm-hmm. Sister Sharia mm-hmm. was a tower strength to me up to now. Yes, because at one point I used, I could stay by her house stay, after yeah. school and until you come home. So and good thing. to him too. Mm-hmm. So like, let's see now, Roshana. She's a little older. She's mm-hmm. older, but they grow up. Mm-hmm. And they would look out like for family, him. Like family, like family. Family. Mm-hmm. I had real good fam- church family, honestly. Mm-hmm. Was supportive. Yes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes my cousins, Betta and Sharon, Marva. They're chipping as well. Yes. Danny, Melvin. Mm-hmm. For, because for years I didn't hold a word with my brothers because mm-hmm. of my father's whole attitude. Mm-hmm. Like they were on top at all time and mm-hmm. I was just there. How would you describe the relationship with your brothers now? Um, it's much better. Mm. But they would call me every now and then. And um But Robert, mm. he never leave me. In spite of everything, sometimes I hear the door knock. It was Robert. Mm-hmm. If he if when he went to school and he's coming by, he would he went there for um Boys Brigade. Mm-hmm. And I would just hear a little sound on his Robert. And your father would say, let him in, let him in. Mm-hmm. He he loves people too. Yes. Mm-hmm. So switching gears to um, a little more on your side now. Um, you got married. Tell us about how you met the person and things never to work out and how you dealt with that challenge and everything. Well, after in the church for years, I got married. Mm-hmm. I always tell the Lord that um, I don't want anybody to come to abuse less than mm-hmm. because it's just the both of us. Mm-hmm. And it's after he left, I knew the person over six, seven years. So after I moved out now, yes. I'm gone on my own. Yeah. You probably start getting like a lonely and thing. Yes. And then you met somebody. Somebody. And, um... The person is from the country and then they start coming to Pentaban. Mm-hmm. We got married 2009. Mm-hmm. He has children. Mm-hmm. Oh, how was it the feeling of getting married and everything? Looking forward to a, um, a beautiful, positive life. and Always, you know, but um, because he has outside children, they manipulate him. Mm-hmm. And it seems as if he didn't have a mind of his own. Mm-hmm. They pressure him into some decisions, yes. in your opinion. Right. And not only that, when I met him, they all weren't talking. Mm-hmm. As in he and his children. Right. Mm-hmm. And one day I plan and said, let me meet at Devon House, and they came. Mm-hmm. 
And that is how they all start talking. Mm. And from that, I went low and they were high. Mm. So many times I helped somebody, I'm out there and they went on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and then did. it didn't work. Mm -hmm. But um, what I had, I shared it with him. Mm -hmm. So is it that you got divorced or you are just separated? Separated. Separated, but never got you any legal wranglings and uh, I asked the lawyer and the lawyer said, um, does he have any asset? Yeah. And I said no. Mm -hmm. And she said, Did you help him in many things? And I said yes. And she said, just relax yourself. And leave it as the, the name not gonna hurt you. Mm -hmm. So you still have the name that you Right, it, that's why I have the ending name. Brown Mondo. Yeah. So how did it make you feel to see that um how you you, you try you know, a new life and with somebody to build. Seeing that you started to build with my father early and that never worked out and you're trying to build again and it didn't work out. How would that make you feel? Um, You feel a way, but in the back of your head, you said um, sometimes you don't make the right choice. Mm -hmm. And maybe you were getting older mm -hmm. and you want to get married. Mm -hmm. We made a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. But I move on and I stayed in the church. And thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. Yes, I lean on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Even even when he left, that voice said to me, change the lock. Mm -hmm. Because he, he asked me for half of the stuff that I had and I gave it to him. Mm -hmm. And he moved out. And a voice said, change the lock. And I changed the lock. Mm -hmm. And then I went, I went to... I told you about the situation and you said, what? Oh, you never tell me before. I said, because maybe you're not so interested in nothing. Mm -hmm. And you said to me, mommy, yes, me interested, even if me not show it. Mm -hmm. And all right, me telling you this now. Yeah. Whatever will make you happy, do it. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord will never leave you. If you want to cry, cry. That's what I was saying to you. That's what you said to me with mm -hmm. this finger. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you said, never mind, you always try to help other people mm -hmm. and it don't work out, but never mind. Mm -hmm. What type of person you would say that you are for persons who don't know you? I am a good woman. I am very strict. Mm -hmm. I am... Um, a person that cares for people. I don't have to know you to care for you. Mm -hmm. I'll do my very best for you. Mm -hmm. Because even sipping away from the child care, mm -hmm. I work with so many elderly. Mm -hmm. And I could name a few of the name. Yeah. Sister Grandison brother. Mm -hmm. Sister Edley mother. Mm -hmm. To name a few. You don't have to go into the few yes. yes. I look after so many elderly. Sister Staple. Mm -hmm. Auntie Jean, mm -hmm. I am always there for elderly or anybody mm -hmm. that call on me. I Just will avail myself. You say, um, care, giving care to um, people is an integral part in your life. Yes. Um, right throughout. Right throughout. Mm -hmm. um, Kamika's mother, mm -hmm. I am a people person. Mm -hmm. Um, you used to say to me when I go out with you, um, Mummy, why why you have to call to so much people? Mm -hmm. It's only cold if you tell morning. Mm, I have to stop every minute. And um, it's a part of me. Mm -hmm. I really love people. Mm -hmm. I'll go the extra mile for somebody. Mm -hmm. And many times I think less about myself. I'll be here in church and I'm looking. And if I just see somebody feel bad, I'm right there for them. Mm -hmm. I was looking for an opportunity to share yes. with somebody, even with the little, little. that you have. Because I remember days when we used to stay back at um, Pentab. Mm -hmm. I would take two little pots. One with curry chicken back and one with rice. Mm -hmm. And um, so many children were there to share for. Mm -hmm. Opal with her children, Hyacinth, and others. Mm -hmm. 
and everybody would get a little. And it cheer and stretch. And we would let you change and eat and we would go to prayer room and pray the whole day. Mm -hmm. Looking back over your life, is there any regrets that you have? Probably you're looking now, long after the fact, and say, probably uh, if I had done this better, this would work out for me. Or a anything that things. you would, would do differently? Is there anything that you would do differently? If I um turn back the hands of time, yeah, I would not let things affect me like you. Mm -hmm. I would work towards whatever you say, but um, as you go along, you make mistakes. Mm -hmm. But um, when you say not make things affect you like me, you mean more, I am more of a, of a rigid person, so external things won't affect me so much. But you, on the other hand, things will bother you and you won't go to your bed and you have yes. it on your mind. And me we are praying the whole night for somebody. Mm -hmm. Not myself. Mm -hmm. I'll be praying for, I'll see a need with somebody and I'm praying the whole time for them. So you're saying if you could turn back the hands of time, you wouldn't make so much external things bother you so much? No. Why? It, you think it, it, it have a... I think it's because of how I was grown up. Yes. That is it. How you were grown up, the pathway. Is there any um thing that decision that you have made in your life that you are proud of that you can say, I'm glad I did this or I'm glad I did that apart from accepting the Lord and, and things. I'm glad I didn't give my child to anybody to look after. Mm -hmm. Why? Um like how my father was giving trouble and I had to go to my grandmother. Mm -hmm. It's a feel back in my head. Mm -hmm. Because I remember one time I get you to go to Cayman. Mm -hmm. And your teacher, Miss Winter, said she would keep you. And in the planning, I just shout out, no! Mm -hmm. And I just grab you up and put you in my hand. And I said, let this Cayman thing die out, you know. Mm -hmm. Let it die out. Because anywhere I'm going, I have to carry this child with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy I came back in town where I could help myself. Because being in the country that I wasn't born. I wasn't used to that? No. And um, it's since I came back there, I could go to Red Cross, mm -hmm. go to Heart. And further your and, education. And further too. my education with people around me that encourage me you know and um and i watch the children that i look after grow up mm -hmm. and they encourage me too mm -hmm. auntie annette encouraged me a lot too so many names i could call mm -hmm. i'm so grateful is, for people is there anybody that you think um throughout the course of your life probably misunderstand who you really are and you'd want to probably clarify something now Probably on the surface, when they just meet you, they think you're this type of person, but you just want to clarify. I well, guess. today, if I've approached anybody... Look, look this way. If I, today, if I have approached anybody and they feel that I, am, I said the wrong thing, I am sorry. Even as you bring up Maria, I don't have anything against her. Mm -hmm. I'll do the best for her. Whatever I have, I always share it with her. Mm -hmm. I think about her so much. Mm -hmm. But she is also a, a enclosed person, mm -hmm. you know? But to God be the glory. Okay. Well, this was a very interesting discussion. As we wrap up, um, is there any closing remark or encouragement that you would want to give to somebody probably who been on the same path as you. Well, I just want to encourage single parents to do the best you can for your child. If you're in a good job, try and save to have a place for yourself. Because when you get older and you really don't have anything, it's not easy. It's not an easy feeling. And I just want to encourage people. If you have a job and you can do a skill, do it. 
if you can help somebody as you travel along, your living will not be in vain. If you have something, if you get some things, just remember to share. Mm -hmm. Sharing is power. Sharing makes a difference. All my family, I thank you for being there for me many times. Sometimes I wish my own child was there for me more. But I realize he's busy at times. I appreciate him. I appreciate his family. Ronaldo is dear to me so much. And I wish everybody all the best. Mm -hmm. But keep focus. You have, a, you have to be focused. And I'll never give up off my goal as I continue this pathway. Mm. Well, there you have it. Um, another interesting discussion here, this time with my mom. This was a very interesting interview, and I really appreciate you talking about some difficult stuff and making yourself transparent and letting people know that nobody is perfect. No. Persons will make mistakes yes. in life, yes. and you just have to embrace it yes. and move on. Coming from me as your son, I really want to put on record that I really appreciate all of the love and the support and the, the genuineness that you have poured into me, um, it really means a lot, you know. Some, some mothers didn't do so well, given the limited resources that they have. I'm glad and happy with the way how I have turned out as an adult. Um, all praises to God, but also thanks to you for doing your best. Um, as you said, I was very sickly and everything and up and down with schooling and you did your best. And I just want to put it on record that I really appreciate you and thanks for always being there for me. You're welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune into another interesting interview. Until you join us again next time, just asking you to keep safe.